Good morning, friends. I want to greet you this morning. This is Pastor Winston Watson on Morning Prayer Live, coming to you right here from the beautiful parish of St. Mary on the island of Jamaica. This morning, I want to dedicate morning. This morning, I want to dedicate um, the next song to a friend of mine, Mr. Matthew. Richmond, Matthew and Melissa Richmond <clears throat> in, in Minnesota. Matthew has had a serious bout with cancer over the last um, couple of years here, and uh, I'm believing God with him and with he and his family, Gwen Armquist, um, Melissa, and uh, Matthew. I dedicate this song to you all this morning. Because this is the Word of God. Thank you for your praise. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never failed me. In all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Chase coming on this morning. Chase, welcome. Devlon, welcome. Kingdom Citizen, welcome. <clears throat> All of you on with us this morning, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, I, I dedicated that song this morning to, to Matthew Richmond, um, who, is, who is really having some physical challenges. Uh, I, I posted in our morning prayer live, the prayer group, 
about the issue, his, his wife, Melissa, had <coughs> recorded a short um, video, about six minutes of what was going on. Uh, it seems that the cancer that they had been treating has disappeared, you know, it has gone, but now other, uh, other um, locations are, you know, manifesting signs of cancer. <coughs> and I, I, I venture to say this, and I want you to understand where I'm coming from when I share this with you all. The, um, we, we have come to a place, I believe, um, my 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 um, spiritual father, Dr. Kenneth E. e. Hagen, <clears throat> when he, sh he shared about healing, and let me say this right up front, I, the thing I'm about to talk about, I have been at fault at the same thing. When, when he talked about healing, he talked about getting involved with people and um, getting around them. For example, let's say with a Matthew, me... If I was immediately in his vicinity, I, I would get over to his house, I would get into his bedroom, his living room, I would, I would be there with a prayer team, <clears throat> and I would spend time praying and believing God and contending for him and contending for his health. Now, I can do it from a distance, but there's nothing like doing it right there, and uh, what we now tend to do is that we have believed God, um, or we're believing God that we, we will just do a microwave. One minute, click, 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 zing, beep. <coughs> so we want to do a microwave prayer <coughs> and have microwave results. But Brother Hagen shared, and he didn't tell us this. He was just sharing how, in a sense, this is how you ought to do it. What he shared was how things occurred. And, you know, I've been looking at um, things with Derek Prince and, <clears throat> and some of the others. And there are people that will pray because God has granted them, granted them either the gift of faith or the gift of the working of miracles. And things happen, happen sometimes more instantaneously. But we don't contend today like we would normally or used to contend for the life or the health of people around us. We don't take time to go in and spend an hour or two hours or three hours in prayer. Hmm? We, we tend to just want the microwave, the microwave. Again, maybe it's two minutes. You know, you press the number, my microwave, <coughs> if you press the number two, you shut the door. It, you shut the door, you press the number two, it immediately goes, and runs for two minutes. <clears throat> and so we have pre-programmed, I believe, ourselves to do microwave prayers. <clears throat> we, we get on and we do things like, um, we do things, you know, like a Facebook prayer or whatever. And all of those things are wonderful. Don't get me wrong. But we don't contend the same way. Whether, whether it be for ourselves or it be for someone else. And I remember there was a young man that um, had been attacked by a, a spiritual presence uh, many years ago. And I went in with the idea that, you know, <clears throat> now, let me, I'm admitting this now. This is what I'm saying so you understand where I'm coming from. I went in with the idea that I'm going to do a quick prayer. I'm going to lay hands on him and he's going to just immediately get up off the bed and he's going to do this and he's going to do that. <clears throat> and it never happened. <clears throat> the five-minute prayer or the two-minute prayer or the sitting there for ten minutes did not cut it. And <clears throat> after he died, the Spirit of the Lord really got on me and began to share with me that I did not truly contend for the life of the young man. I have made many mistakes in my life. <clears throat> and uh, my usual mistake is when it comes to things like that, where, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> where I believe that this is the way to do it, and I really <clears throat> did not listen to the Word of God or really follow my heart when it came to what God said. 
<clears throat> I just said, well, this is what I see everyone else doing, and I would do that. But I did not sit. I did not contend. I did not take the time um, to spend in intercession for that young man. <clears throat> the times that I've done that, I knew a young man with HIV. He was HIV positive and had um, some significant issues. And I spent hours, hours contending for him one evening. <clears throat> and when I did that, when he next went to the doctor, he was free. And so I know the reality of being there for someone more than just the two minutes or the three minutes or the four minute prayer. <clears throat> we have come to be a society that desires immediate result. You know, the telephone, you know, if somebody calls you, um, people will call me on my phone and I might be either in prayer or meditating or reading the word and I really don't answer the phone. When I'm, when I'm committed to something with God, if it's something else, I may <coughs> answer the phone. But if it has something to do with the Lord, I will not answer my phone until I'm through. I will return the call. And what has happened is that people will get on the phone with me and say, you know, I've been calling you for so long and you haven't answered your phone. Of course not. Of course not. There was a time in our world when there would be patience to wait on a return call <clears throat> or patience to call back hours later or the next day. But now we have an immediate desire for things. <clears throat> but um, we need to remember that some things require the patience of the Lord, the patience to press in, because not everything is instantaneous. Amen? Good morning, Brother Isaac. Ah, bless you, son. <clears throat> Isaac said he hadn't been on for a while. Um, I just always see him, and I assume that he's on. <laughs> and Sean, good morning, Sean Smith. Good to have you with us. Don't know where you're from, Sean. Just tell us where you're from. I know where Isaac's from. Um, but, but we remember that it is important for us, really important for us, to press in. <clears throat> because if you... See, I am not a very patient person in many things. I, I've written computer programs, and I'm extremely patient in writing computer programs and diagnosing. I did a class or a course in computer um, diagnostic methodologies, and <clears throat> it was a very tedious, and it takes time to diagnose certain issues with components of the computer systems, especially when it has to do with software and the nuances of code and the data and all of that. <clears throat> and I'm very good at that. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, when it comes to other things, if somebody asks me to change a part in a car, you can forget it because I know if I start it, you know, it will be um, it will be started, but the end product is going to be um, questionable. Um, I see Sean when Sean is putting up a block wall, and how he has to line things up with a cord, and how he has to do this. I put up um, just one section of six blocks <clears throat> uh, a few days ago, and it's kind of leaning like the leaning tower, you know. Uh, and, and so, I mean, I tried my best. I mean, I put the level next to it, and I did this, and then when I finished, it was like the leaning tower, even with what I, I tried. And so, so my level of patience with certain things is not always there. <clears throat> but we have to, we cannot... <clears throat> we cannot ignore patience when it comes to the Word of God and when it comes to praying for people who are saddled with serious life-threatening conditions. Amen? I want you to turn with me this morning to Joshua chapter 18. Joshua chapter 18. Joshua chapter 18. And I'm going to talk about contending contending, Paul said, contending for the mastery, <clears throat> contending for the control, contending. And when he says contending, it doesn't mean you go there one time, slap, slap, and it's done. Contending means you press in and you, you fight 
with the word, you fight with the sword of the spirit until the answer manifests. My God, <clears throat> you fight until it comes. My God. I want you to look at Joshua 18 and the first verse. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel. <clears throat> so in this case, an entire nation. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel um, assembled together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of the congregation. So the house of God is being set up. The presence of God is being put in. The, the place, the house, the presence of God is being assembled. And the congregation there, and the land was subdued before them. So the land was before them, absolutely ready to receive them. The land was ready to receive them for the blessing. Good morning, Miss Claudia. <clears throat> the land was ready to receive them. The promise of God from Numbers chapter 12 and chapter 13 the promise of God was open to them. But listen to what Joshua says. Verse 2. And there remained among the children of Israel. Now remember there are 12 tribes. There remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. There remained among the children of Israel Twelve tribes, I mean, there are twelve tribes, seven tribes now, which had not received their inheritance. <clears throat> now, I'm telling you this, and I'm focusing on the issue of sickness and disease. We, you know, we come in and we prophesy. You know, um, Brother uh, Marsha is on. Good morning, Marsha. Um, Brother Gary, Marsha's husband. Brother Gary, I prophesy over you that you are going to be healed and dot, 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 and we open our mouth and we say things, but we don't take the time to contend. Not everything happens instantaneously. We don't take the time to truly contend for the word and contend for the answer. And so we, we just, you know, and yes, we are believers, but look at this. There are seven tribes that have not yet received their inheritance. And what are they going to have to do? They have to go in and they have to take it. They don't just, oh, well, it is ours, it is ours, it is ours. And we do the, <clears throat> the Holy Ghost dance and we jump around and then it, it drops out the sky for us. No, 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 no. We have to step in. And so when we step into Gary's world and uh, we contend for and we contend with Gary. And we contend, when I say contend with him, is that we join him. And sometimes people that are going through issues can't contend with for themselves. They can't fight for themselves. They're, they're weak in different ways. So we jump in there with arm in arm with Marshall. We jump in there arm in arm with Stephanie. We jump in their arm in arm with Melissa. We jump in their arm in arm <coughs> with those that are around them. And we truly not just say some nice word and then in the next moment we forget about what we have just said. But we truly take time. Instead of sitting there and watching television all night or all day, <coughs> instead of just, you know, whatever it is that we do, sometimes that really wastes our time. We take the time to contend, to fight for the mastery, to fight for the mountain. <clears throat> I know the scripture says, speak to the mountain. I know all of that. But I also realize that there are some things that you may speak to it, but you still have to deal with it. You still have to work with the word of God against the issue that challenges you. <clears throat> we still, uh, Marsha, I think um, Awake Ministries, with, with whom she works, um, Awake Ministries is just um, opening what they say is a, they've called it a transition house. I just noticed that on my newsfeed. And uh, the transition house was not somebody getting up and saying, oh, I have a transition house. 
and I speak to my mountain of lack of a transition house, and the transition house appears. No, somebody had to contend. They had to work for the money. They had to work for the donations. They had to, many things had to be in place. The property had to be found, <clears throat> and so many things. Now, I, I noticed that there were guys there painting and working and probably putting sheetrock in and all of that stuff. And it, it, it probably has taken maybe months and maybe will be weeks before that place is ready for someone to move in. Well, my friend, we need to learn how to contend for the lives of the people that ask us to pray. Amen? We need to know how to press in. Now, again, Joshua chapter 18, and there remain, verse 2, <clears throat> And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes, which had not yet received their inheritance. Now look at the next verse. Um, verse 3. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, How long are ye slack um, to go to possess the land which the Lord your God, the God of your fathers, has given you? I want to read that in the Message Bible. Joshua, verse 3, Joshua addressed the people of Israel. How long are you going to sit around on your hands, putting off, taking position, possession of the land that God, the God of your ancestors has given you? Let me read it again, because I don't think that one is something that we get very easily. How long are you going to sit around on your hands, putting off, taking possession of of the land that God, the God of your ancestors, has given you. My God. Did you hear that? We have to contend. We have to go in and we have to possess. Possess doesn't always mean you just walk in and kick everybody out. <clears throat> in the sense of just with a word. Um, the children of Israel had to fight for what was theirs. They had to push in for what was theirs. We have a tendency, you know, there, there are people around that I've noticed, they want the best of God, but they complain about everything. They, um, they get on with their, with their colleagues in their office, and they complain, and they gossip, and they chat, all sometimes in the sense of we are talking about business or talking about that, but I've, I've heard the conversation sometimes. I have seen... And then I've seen the results. We need to press in. We need to contend. We need to push. We really need to press and take that which is our own inheritance, my friend. Hmm? Um, put the rubber to the road. <laughs> Work for what you want. <laughs> I like that, Judy. <clears throat> you see, my friend, um, and Joshua said unto the children of Israel, again, verse 3, How long are you going to sit around on your hands? How many of us, there are things that are ours, things that's within the context of God's promise for us. Remember what we spoke about yesterday. It is indeed God's promise for us. But we are, we are just sitting around. Um, <laughs> kingdom citizen says, Lord, Give me the push spirit, the pushing spirit. Exactly. You need to push. <clears throat> you need to, uh, you know, I, I know I've been lying on the bed sometimes and, and it's time to pray and I really don't feel like getting up. And it, it, it literally feels like somebody comes and pushes me. I, I don't know what ever happened to you, but I feel like somebody comes and actually shakes me or shakes the bed. And I, and I realize, I, I, the shaking, by the way, is not a little shaking where mommy would come and try to wake you from school and you turn over and go back to sleep again. When that shaking comes, I mean, you are wide awake. When that shaking comes, all of your faculties are brought to bear immediately to the situation. And so this morning, this morning, I want us, Father, I ask you, as Kingdom Citizen just said, <clears throat> I want you, Lord God, to help us, Father, to have a, a decisive spirit, a spirit that pushes, 
a spirit, Lord God, that's not microwave, but a spirit, Father, that's tenacious. And Father, long, long standing with the issues and the challenges that's before us. I want us to press in, Father. You know, Father, I understand that in, in, a, in the typical American church today, a message cannot be more than 20 minutes or 21 minutes or maybe a half an hour is the longest. We come to church in Jamaica and we have three hours and four hours, you know, maybe a three hour message in church. I don't preach three hours <coughs> in our church, but, but there are people that do. But we do not anymore have the capacity to sit and bear to hear the word of God for any long period of time. Paul spoke so long that, I think it was Eutychus, fell asleep and fell out the window in the book of Acts. Now you realize, my friend, that it is critically important that we contend. Not everything in the spirit happens with a snap, which is a snap of the finger. Not everything happens with a snap of the finger. Not everything happens with just one spoken word. There is a contending. There is a work that is before us. You know, if Tanya, morning Tanya, if Tanya sends me a message and asks me to pray, maybe there's a five-minute prayer that I pray because the Lord leads me to do so. <coughs> but maybe, just maybe, I've got to spend two hours. Maybe, just maybe, I've got to spend three hours. Are we really ready as people of God? Um, overseer um, Lee Collins on. Overseer, can you imagine this morning? Will we? I, I like that. I love that, uh, Marsha. You're saying it. Good morning, Tanya. <coughs> You're saying it just right. Will you? Will you pray with me? Will you stay with me? Will you stay up with me? Will you press with me? And the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, they couldn't, what, the, really the word there is watch with me. <clears throat> Will you watch with me? When we were working with and praying for Ava Grace, did you notice that it did not take one prayer? <clears throat> Excuse me, my, my throat issue. <clears throat> it's not taking one prayer and one declaration. My eye issue. It's not taking one prayer and one declaration. I am pressing in. Hmm? I am pressing in. <laughs> Men are always to pray. I know that scripture very well, Sister Paula. <laughs> that, is a, <laughs> that is so important. You know, you have to keep at it. You have to keep knocking at the door. You have to keep pushing. You have to keep pressing, my friends. <clears throat> Not that you don't believe, but you're contending for the mastery. You're contending for the upper hand. And this morning, I want you to contend with me. Remember, <clears throat> when, with Ava Grace, we had a week of fasting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Remember with Ava Grace, we had a week of fasting and prayer. We had times where we spent evenings, I spent evenings just praying for Abel Grace. It wasn't a one-shot deal. It wasn't, you know, just, hey, I mean, over time, we, we've created, we've made bracelets, Sister um, Gail, bracelets for Ava Gail to remind people to pray, for Ava Grace, rather. Ava Gail, Ava Grace, <laughs> to pray for Ava Grace. Uh, and we did it. For months, we contended for the life of Ava Grace. Don't you see that? Now, someone asks us to pray, and we pray one prayer, one morning, and that's the end of it. There's a young lady, um, a woman, that has asked me to pray for her grandson, um, who is involved in a certain um, lifestyle choice or lifestyle leading, and uh, sometimes it's not just choice. But, I mean, I, that young man, he, he's always on my heart, and I'm constantly praying for him. 
This was a year ago, she, right here on, on, on the program. And I wonder, she may not even realize that it takes time for her grandson. It takes time for us to press in and pray. It's not always just fix it, Lord. <clears throat> Do it, Lord. Sometimes things happen the, the way they happen because somebody has been praying for you for a long time. Because you have been dealing with something for a long time. And it seems like a suddenly, but it not, it's not really in the whole scheme of things a suddenly. It is a, a very precise, strategic timing of God. And so don't sit on your hands anymore, but get up and pray. Or get on your knees and pray. Let's do what is necessary to push in to the presence of God. <clears throat> and so this morning, you know, I'm, I'm going to be pressing in to God for, for, for um, Melissa and for Matthew. Because, uh, because I will do everything. That young man, <clears throat> Matthew, has been a blessing to me over the years. Matthew, just like, just like. Um, the Lord says, I am his friend. Matthew has been a friend of Winston Watson. Amen? Marcia says, stick to itiveness. Good. I wonder, Jesus said, not many. <clears throat> many will call you brother. Many will call you friend. But how many of us would give up our life for our friend? <clears throat> How many of us would give up two and three hours each night for a week for a friend? How many of us would give up one hour each night for a friend? Because as soon as the phone rings, as soon as the phone rings, we run to the phone and we interrupt our prayer time just like that. We interrupt our prayer time but will you spend one hour, I'm asking you, my friends, <clears throat> will you spend one hour during this week, one hour contending for the healing of Matthew Richmond? One hour, and I'm going to press in to do this at least one hour each evening, one hour each day. One hour, and I'm not going to watch the clock, <clears throat> you know, because of scheduling and so on. You may have to. But I'm going to press in one hour each day to press in and for that hour to deal with the issue of cancer that is attempting to metastasize in Matthew's body around his liver around his lungs. <clears throat> These things ought not to be so. But are we friend enough? Are we brothers and sisters in Christ enough that if Gail calls and says, would you pray with me? Or do you look at the clock and say, well, I have five minutes to pray, Gail. And I'm not talking about the fact that you may have a schedule that you have to keep. I'm talking about because we just don't have the, uh, let me use Marsha's word, the stick to itiveness, Because we get impatient and when we begin to pray or we begin to read the word, there is a tendency for us to get, well, uh, Marky, my little <coughs> adopted grandson here, Marky said, um, um, Pastor, I'm bored. <laughs> <coughs> He'll tell me, you know, we're doing something. He says, I'm bored. And I've had to talk to them about that. I, 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 we get spiritually bored with the Word of God. Spiritually bored with praying and, and the repetitiveness of prayer. We get bored with pushing into God because we want an instant result. Many times I've had to press. I'm believing God right now for certain things for this ministry. And just last night, 
I took Marky home. He was with me yesterday afternoon after school. And uh, last night on my way back from dropping him off, it was pouring rain. <laughs> so my way back from dropping him off last evening when mommy got home, I, um, I realized that I had not spoken into some of the things for a couple of days, maybe a couple of hours. <clears throat> and uh, I began while I was driving to confess, to believe, to open my mouth and declare. And I've been doing this for months. I've been speaking this for months. I've been praying this for months. <clears throat> Before I came to Jamaica, I had a list of things to pray. And I didn't pray them one night. I prayed them for over a year before I came to Jamaica for one year, every day I prayed the same prayer. God, prepare a place for us. God, open opportunity for us. God, put right people in place to meet us when we get to certain places where we need decisions made on our behalf. God, speak to the businesses, speak to the individuals, speak to the government on our behalf. One year plus, <clears throat> and after that, when I came to Jamaica, I continued to pray the same prayer. My God, my God, my God. I'm not telling you something that I have not exercised and I have not done. It is a season for us to press in. It took God um, how many years since Isaiah... 53, to bring forth his son in Matthew chapter 1 and then in Luke 1. <clears throat> How long did it take hmm, for that to happen? How many years? How many years for a prophetic word issued by Joshua to come in um, to fruition when he spoke about not rebuilding the walls of Jericho? Almost, they said around four to six hundred, four, between four hundred to six hundred years it took for that word to truly manifest, but nevertheless, here, um, here, when he began to build, the word manifested. When um, the fullness of time was come, Emmanuel or Messiah was manifested. You see, not everything is at the snap of a finger. Not everything occurs because we say one word. <clears throat> Not everything happens because we get up and we you know, recite a prayer, I decree and I declare. The right seasons of time, in the right seasons of time, the word of God will manifest. The promises of God will manifest. Uh, do not get weary in doing well. Do not give up, but press and be tenacious and pull and pull and pull in to what God. <laughs> yes, Mr. Patricia, it took generations. And sometimes the reality is for someone like me that I am believing God, let's say for this ministry, to have a certain presence in Jamaica. It may not happen in my lifetime. <clears throat> All I might be called to do right now is to set a foundation to begin to do certain things so things are in place for maybe a Stephanie and a Marsha and, <clears throat> and then for, a, you know, and, and for others, you know, for, a, you know, a, a Nomlet Dallas and, a, you know, and, a, and the others for a Teddy Price and, you know, for a Lisa Blackford and, and for these guys to carry this thing into another dimension. Amen? That's why I have a tendency of being very rigid in certain things when it comes to spirit, comes to spiritual things. To be very rigid because I know that I am here for just a season and there are certain things that need to be done in that season. How long? In Joshua chapter 18, verse 3. How long are you going to sit around on your hands, putting off, taking possession 
of the land that God, the God of your ancestors, has given you. He has already given it, but we've got to take it. He has already given it, <clears throat> but we've got to go in and take it. This morning, take it. If you remember nothing else this morning, remember these two words. Take it, whatever it is in your life. Father, I pray over Matthew Richmond this morning, and I thank you, Father, for the blessing of the healing power, the virtue of God, Father, that transforms my God. Hmm? Amen. I thank you, Lord God, for touching Matthew's physical body. I thank you, Lord God, for stepping back. Father, this metastasizing cancer that's, that, that's causing his physical body to show on x-rays or on whatever scans that they are doing, Father. I thank you this morning, Father, that you touch Melissa with encouraging words. And Lord God, that her faith, Father, does not wear thin, but her faith is increased. My God, her faith is increased. I thank you, Father, that the spirit of discouragement, Father, that has attempted to overtake Matthew is replaced, Father, with a spirit of faith. Father, I thank you this morning that my friend is strong <coughs> and mighty. My friend is like Lord God, it is like Lord God, that young boy that the angel came to. And when he came, he said, Thou mighty man of valor. And he could not believe that he was a mighty man himself. But Lord God, you demonstrated to him in Judges chapter 6 that he was a mighty man of valor. This morning, God, this morning, God, elevate Matthew's heart. Elevate Matthew's spirit, Father. Surround him, Lord God, with your angelic presence, Lord God. Allow the Spirit of God, Father, to re-energize Matthew this morning. Take it, Matthew. Mighty God. <clears throat> and Matthew, we are there with you. If you're going to watch this today, if you're watching it, we are there with you. We are there, Lord God. The violent, take it by force. And force is not expressed one time. It is a force that contends. Uh, in the Psalms, the 23rd Psalms, it says, He sets a place, a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I am in the presence of my enemy and I am contending for the mastery. Mighty God, help us this morning. Help us this morning to contend. My friends, I've asked you to pray for Matthew. And then it might be praying for other things in your own life. One hour each day. Can you <coughs> devote one hour each day to meditate and pray? Are we so now caught up in the microwave world? Are we now so caught up in instant gratification that we cannot anymore contend. We cannot anymore watch. Mighty God, thank you, Father, for stamina in the Spirit. Thank you for stamina, Lord God, in the Word, and thank you for stamina, Lord God, in our natural flesh. My friends, have a wonderful day. <clears throat> I will see you tomorrow, and... Uh, I'm going to talk tomorrow very briefly again. I'm not taking a lot of time these mornings. I took a little longer time this morning. But I'm going to talk tomorrow about contamination of the Christian atmosphere and how we, we keep away from con contamination. You see, one of the reasons why we can't pray or we just pray for the two minutes or three minutes or five minutes, one of the reasons why we don't press in is because we have been contaminated by the world system. <clears throat> we have been contaminated with that spirit of immediate gratification. We have been contaminated with that microwave mentality. But tomorrow morning, let's talk about how we deal with the contamination of the Christian's atmosphere. May God bless you. 
Matt Shelton, have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us. And uh, as I leave this morning, I'm going to pray and believe God that you too, that you can pray for not only Matthew, but you can pray for yourself. And you can believe that God and the things that are happening in your life, the Lord mm -hmm. Jesus Christ will truly bring to pass that which is necessary for you to grow and be who he wants you to be. Tasha Cobbs Leonard, the goodness of God. Hallelujah. And remember, this is Morning Prayer Life. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never failed me. In all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. dedicate one hour to pray for a young man you may not know personally but look online you'll see him in our morning prayer live group you'll see his wife speaking about him you will you will you will be pressing in and you will be praying forward things as you pray for that one hour what is God going to do for you amen when you spend that time, and it, it doesn't have to be one hour, it could be two hours. It could be three hours as God leads you. But will you at least spend that hour believing God? When I finish this this morning, I'm running out, I'm going out into my back, and I'm going to be walking and contending for Matthew's life. Isn't it nice to have a friend that will contend for your life? God bless you. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow when we talk about contamination of the Christian's atmosphere. See you tomorrow.